Joshua chapter 17, the land division of Manasseh. There was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh. These are the two sons of Joseph. For he was the firstborn of Joseph, to wit. For Machar, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war. Therefore, he had Gilead and Basha. So, I would take his military strength has gotten two cities. There was also a lot for the rest of the children of Manasseh. And that rest, uh, Reuben, Dan, uh, Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh are on the other side, the Jordan River. The half-tribe that had crossed the river and stayed, here's the rest, by their families, for the children of Ezer, and for the children of Helic, and for the children of Asherio, and for the children of Shechem, and for the children of Hefer, for the children of Shamdah, these were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their family. Now back in Numbers 26, we find, But Zohavad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Mecher, the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but daughters. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, and Noah, Hagla, Mucha, and Tarja. Notice how often these girls show up. Now these girls walked up to Moses and said, Hey, listen, our father, he died in the wilderness, not because of the rebellion of the children of Israel. He died in his own sin. He has no son. So he's not going to get no land. There's no male seed for him to get the land. So why should our father die off by land? In verse 4, And they came near before Eliezer the priest and before Joshua. These girls got to stand before Moses and talk to Moses. Now they're speaking to Joshua. I don't think anybody could just walk up to Moses and, and Joshua say, you know, start carrying a conversation. You like me walking up to the Pennsylvania Avenue, walking right into the White House saying, hey, Mr. Trump, here, Mr. President, how you doing? But these girls, by the mercy of God, they came near before Eliezer the priest and before Joshua the son of Nun. Before the princes, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brethren. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of their fathers. So, exactly what they asked, exactly what Moses, Moses went into God and said, God, what do we do about this? And God says, They shall get land, they shall marry within their tribes. And there fell ten portions to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Basha, which were on the other side of Jordan. So there was land over there too, on the wrong side. Because the daughters of Manasseh had inheritance among his sons, and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. Now here goes the coast of Manasseh was from Asher to Mecca. Medus that lies before Shechem that's in the line of Jacob and the border went along the right hand to the inhabitants of El Tipa Tika something now Manasseh had the land of Tipa but Tipa on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim so Ephraim and Manasseh are together brothers in the land and the coast descended into the river Kana, southward of the river. These cities of Ephraim are among the cities of Manasseh. The coast of Manasseh also was on the north side of the river, and outgoings of it were at the sea. So there's cities among the two brothers in the land. Southward it was Ephraim's, and northward was Manasseh. And the river is the border. I mean, excuse me, the sea is the border. So it's proper, seas and rivers are borders. And they met together at Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. So Asher and Issachar are the brethren, the, tri the tribes of Israel. There's a portion for each of the 12 tribes. Manasseh had in Issachar and Asher, Beth Sheen, that's a famous place in the Bible, and her towns in Iblam, and her towns and inhabitants of Dor, 
and her town. And the inhabitants of Endor. Oh, so the witch of Endor is living in the Manasseh area. And her towns. The inhabitants of Kagak, whatever. And her towns, the inhabitants of Megiddo. Megiddo. The Battle of Armageddon. Armageddon. There it is. It's in Manasseh. And her towns, even three countries. Country. And yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. We saw the error of that way. They did not get complete victory. And God says, you're going to get victory. But they said no. And it came to pass when the children of Israel were waxing strong. That they put the Canaanites to tribute tax. But did not utterly drive them out. So let's look at Deuteronomy 7 too. Let's see what God told them to do. We're in the middle of Joshua, and we're going to see this often. Deuteronomy 7 2. Oh, they couldn't keep out the Canaanites. They couldn't keep out the Jebusites. They couldn't keep out these. Deuteronomy 7 2. We'll start at verse 1. At the end of verse 1, the Hivites, the Gedgesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. That was last night. Seven nations greater and mightier than thou, and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. And over here they say, okay, you can stay in the land, we'll just tax you. And we looked at Solomon last night, how all the gods have come back through Solomon. When God says utterly destroy him, does it mean tax him? Verse 12, yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. Despise this Deuteronomy 7 2. Yet, uh, and the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, verse 14, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot? Your one tribe. That's why you got one lot. What, what on earth? And half of you guys are on the other side of the river. These guys got some nerve. We want more land. You're only half a tribe. And you got your land. We want more. And one portion to inherit. Seeing I am a great people. For as much as the Lord has blessed me here too. We're a lot of people. And Joshua answered, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the, there in the land of the Perizzites and the giants. If Mount Ephraim be too narrow. You ain't got enough land. What about the wood? What about the forest over there? Okay, they got giants, but go over there, cut the wood and kill the giants. There's your land. See, they wanted something easy. They didn't want to work hard. They want it already prescribed and already ready built for them. And the children of Joseph said, The hill is not enough for us. See all the Canaanites, you mean the Canaanites you couldn't get out of the land? That dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron. But they have God. Jericho didn't have any chariots. AI had no chariots. I don't know. Both they who are the Beshemish, Beth Shemit, and her towns, and they who are the Valley of Jezreel. Jezreel, that's another famous place in the Bible. Now here's where people really. Joshua spanked onto the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim, and to Manasseh. They're both gathering on him. Saying, Thou art a great people. That's sarcasm. Thou art a great people. You say you're great people. Thou art great people. It has great power. <laughs> go, go, Joshua, go. Thou shalt not have one lot only, but the mountain shall be thine, for it is a wood. We already talked about the wood. There's giants in the wood. And thou shalt cut it down. He already told him that. And the outgoings of it shall be thine. 
For thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, which they don't completely. Though they have iron, iron chariots. Look at the sarcasm. And though they be strong, and yet we learned they didn't drive them all out. And in order to get this extra land that Joshua gives them, they got to cut some trees down. We got to work. And behind some of those trees are giants. You mean we got to fight? Why not? You've been fighting since you got into the land. And you see this among the rulers all the time. You know, they come up and they give a hard time. Ephraim and Manasseh, this is not the first time they do this. Japheth, bow the bow, he says, Lord, the first thing I will sacrifice to, he ends up killing his daughter. Whether he did that or not, we'll get to that point. And Ephraim comes up. Why didn't you call us? We're going to burn your whole family. Uh, that's the wrong time. And you'll see these people with Joshua. They're going to come up and they're just going to cause problems. 